first day also we have our speaker for today's session um, and that is um blessing in yakwe as well madam blessing you would have to also correct me if i mispronounce that i'm very sorry about that um in yakwe you are you are correct so let's go okay okay perfect thank you so much okay and um she would be talking madam blessing will be addressing us today and i'm with furthering our understanding on dyslexia and she will be talking about um what dyslexia is what are the biological basis of dyslexia um what are the identification signs across age groups um and dyslexia is an umbrella name for dyslexia dysgraphia calculia and dyspraxia um what are the dyslexia both acquired and developmental as well as the um, management strategies um, for dyslexia. So, Madam Lesson is a registered special needs um, Nigerian, in Nigerian, Nigerian, is Nigerian teacher. Her certification with CADET Academy covers the 13 disabilities um, mentioned in the U.S. Internet and Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, IDEA Act, IDEA. However, her passion lies within kids with specific learning difficulties. Over the years, she has recorded amazing progress working with these kids and training school, um, schools, teachers, and parents to try to achieve um, results. Our organization is Dyslexia Health Africa, um, and it has held various seminars on dyslexia and trained several individuals and schools on how to meet the needs of these special set of kids. She is also satisfied, satisfied by the by the International Board for Credentialing and Continue, Continuing Education Standards, that is the IBCCPS, and this certification gives her the leverage to offer intervention services to children with special needs wherever she is in any part of the world, as well. She batched a certificate of last year with Nessie Learning, an education, an award-winning educational publisher that creates multimedia learning games, video content, and computer program that are used in school in 192 countries across the world for children with learning issues. She's also been recognized by the John Maxwell team as an individual committed to learning and um, leaving each of the 15 individual laws of growth in John Maxwell's material to add value to her life and others and to reach her ultimate potential by intentionally creating a plan and taking action of our, for her personal growth. Currently, she is running a dyslexia course within, with the University College London, UCL, and she's also proudly a scholarship beneficiary of the Learning Disability Association of America, LDA's 55th annual conference. Blessing Inyapwe believes that there are no limits and every child can learn, and she's here with us with such a very impressive profile um, to um, lecture us more and to further our understanding on dyslexia. So with this, I would yield the floor to her um, to, um, to continue her lecture series with us today. Thank you, Madam Blessing Inyapwe. Um, we're honored to have you here with us for the time, taking the um, time and the peace, especially with everything going on. Thank you. So much, but well, thank you so much for it. All right, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Can everyone hear me? I know we've been having a bit of issue with network. Yeah. Your hearing is about a child who can't read or a child who can't read. There's more to a person with dyslexia than their inability to read, and it's very important that we understand that. When we have an understanding of that, we are more likely to embrace it and find solutions to help. But as a teacher, when I talk about dyslexia, I love to go way back and talk about the umbrella term. Um, now, moderator was talking and spoke about the idea IDEA. Now, under that act, there are 13 disabilities that have been recognized by the idea, the IDEA, and under those 13 disabilities, you have what is called specific learning disabilities. And under specific learning disabilities, you have five types. Of course, the most popular are the three, which is what we have. Uh, we have dyslexia, of course, we have the calculator, and we have this graph here. Now, when you talk about this graph here, you're talking about a person who has issues 
to the writing, basically their handwriting. And when you're talking about the calculator, it's more on a person's ability to do calculus, to do math. But of course, our focus is based on dyslexia. And you might, you may even ask, why is it that dyslexia seems to be more popular in post than dysgraphia and dyscalculia? That's because 75% of people who have learning difficulties have dyslexia. The same thing, so we hear and most kids who, I can hear you. Can you mute your mic? Good. Or host, please help me mute everyone. So I was saying that 75% of people who have learning difficulties have dyslexia. And then again, over 85% of people who have dyslexia show signs of dysgraphia and dyscalculia as well. So it means anyone who knows about dyslexia can work with kids who have dysgraphia, can offer help to kids who have dyscalculia as well. Now, if you followed me for a while, you realize that this is one of my favorite definitions of dyslexia. And it says that dyslexia is an unexpected difficulty in reading for an individual who has the intelligence to be a more special reader. Now, I love this definition because it, first of all, looks at, at the dyslexia as an intelligent being. And that's the point most people tend to forget when they're talking about children with dyslexia. They just assume that a person who has dyslexia is a person who is dumb, who doesn't know a thing, who is always coming last in class, and all of the things you can think of. So, and this is due to difficulty in getting to know the individual's sounds or spoken language. This affects the ability of an individual to speak, to read, to tell, and often learn a second language or even any other skill. So you can see that the core foundation and problem of dyslexia, first of all, starts with an individual's difficulty in getting to know sound of spoken language. And this in turn grows like a tree and gets to affect other areas of someone who has dyslexia. So what I want to get here is first of all, before all of this shows, a person with dyslexia is an intelligent being. Now it will amaze you that if you bring in kids here, and test their IQ. Probably you bring in five kids, one has dyslexia, you test their IQ. You'd be surprised to realize that some of the kids who don't have dyslexia, their IQ might be lower than that of a child who has dyslexia. Now, this tells us that dyslexia has nothing, absolutely nothing. Research has said that as well. I'm not the only person saying this to do with that individual's IQ. Okay. So paradox only comes when you see someone who is can read. I think that's where the paradox comes, where parents have issues, where teachers have issues, and they are wondering, I mean, are you sure this child is not just lazy? Because how can this child be this smart and be unable to read? I think this child is missing. Forget that dyslexia doesn't affect the child's IQ. So a child might have a foundational problem in phonics, which affects schoolwork. And of course, all of the time trying to read, they have no time to comprehend. So just for instance, let's assume I'm dyslexic and I'm trying to read this as a child. And on, on X, X, now just imagine the struggle. At the, end of, at the end of everything, when I'm done reading this, and you ask me, okay, what did you just read? Tell me about what you just read. You'll be surprised that I can't remember a thing. Why? Because I spent all my energy trying to decode words so that I can read. So you can see that the problem that started with inability, uh, difficulty with spoken language, with phonemes, developed into comprehension. Why? Because I couldn't decode words properly. Therefore, I spent all of my energy trying to decode them, and it now affected my comprehension. And for kids who are not attended to, this begins to spread into other areas of their life. Because if you can read and you're always given a book, it's gonna affect math, it's gonna affect social studies, it's gonna affect government or whatever subject you have. Now, it doesn't mean the child is dumb. It just means that a simple act of being unable to read is affecting other areas of our life. So do we understand that? Like I said, 
yes, you, you can talk, you have to mute your mic, but then you can show me signals, you can wave your hands, and you can send comments. I'm a teacher, I love engagement. So dyslexia is a difficulty within the language system, more specifically the phonological aspect of language. It is not seen words backwards. No, it is not. It is not a sign of poor intelligence. I'll explain that. Also, it is not the result of impaired vision. I mean, there was a time on Facebook, we saw someone marketing and a special glass for children with dyslexia. Thank God we raised an alarm and they had to take that off. Okay, they didn't take it off. I think they changed uh, the topic or so. There is, children who have dyslexia have nothing with impaired vision. If it is impaired vision, then it is not dyslexia. Children with dyslexia are not lazy. I love to emphasize this because in your classroom, kids with dyslexia are actually working the hard. Why? Because it takes them more time and more energy, more um, energy to put their mind to work, to bring in results that an average child will. So you get to see that why your regular kids, we call them neurotypical kids, are putting in 1%. A child with dyslexia has to double that, has to triple that to get the same results that this particular child is getting in the classroom. And you need to also know that children and adults with dyslexia simply have a neurological disorder that causes their brains to process and interpret information differently. And that's why right now we are currently um, talking more about learning disabilities as learning difficulties, because it is more of a different way of learning and not an individual's inability to learn. Okay. Now, when you talk about signs of dyslexia, like I was saying, people like to first of all start with the child's inability to read. But like, but like I was telling you, when it comes to dyslexia, there is more to a child than their inability to read. Now, most teachers, most schools, most families do not know this. And that is why they tend to see dyslexia as something bad or something that they should sympathize with. But if you get to understand the strengths that come with a person having dyslexia, I mean, the, um, Tiffany, the VC of Nancy was, was asked me a question because, you know, most people who go into dyslexia foundations and go into helping are people who have dyslexia, most of them anyway. So she was asking me that, am I dyslexic? And I was like, oh boy, I wish I was. You know why? Being dyslexic comes with an advantage. Like we saw in the last slide, there is a way your brain is wired. Now, I love what, um, what's his name, David? Yes, yeah, David, in his book, uh, when he was talking about dyslexia. And he said he was interviewed. And he was said to mention popular people doing, popular people with dyslexia doing amazing work out there. And he began to mention all of them, Whoopi, which is one of them here. And the host of the show say, wow, they were able to do all of this despite their dys dyslexia. And David said, she got it wrong. That's not what she was trying to do, he was trying to say. They were able to do all of this because of their dyslexia. There's a way their brain is wired that makes them feel poor into being excellent entrepreneurs, as we're going to see. So rather than starting with a child's inability to read, let me kick you off with an individual strength of a person who has dyslexia. And let's look at some of them. Let's look at Whoopi Godberg. I'm sure we know her, right? You can give me a thumbs up or a wave if you know her or you've watched her movie. Now, the woman well known for her comedy and acting chops, being one of the few people to, people to ever receive this award. Can you see? He got. It is called Eva because she received an Emmy, she received a Grammy, she received an Oscar, and she received a Tony Award. Now, in the field of entertainment, only a few people get all of the five. And of course, you know that when you get a Grammy Award alone, that is big. When you get an Oscar alone, that is big. But she got an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and the Tony Award. And being an opinionated social commentator on the view, what is less well known is that she has done this all with dyslexia, a learning disorder that makes something look like reading is very difficult. Now, I know I also talk fast when I'm excited. If I'm too fast, please feel free and let me know so I can slow down, okay? Okay. Okay. 
All right. Now talking about her dyslexia. What I remember about being a kid was that I felt pretty protected. I wasn't afraid and I had a mother who understood after a while that there was something different about the way I learned. Now remember, nothing different about who they are or their inability to read. There's something different about how they learn. And this is what we forget in school. We try to teach these children the way other kids learn or the way we learn. So now I see, I don't even see dyslexia as a learning problem. I see it more like uh, the system failing children who have learning issues. Why? Trying to fit them in a box when they can learn in other different ways. I'm saying this not just as someone talking to you here today, as someone who has taught these kids for the past six years. Now let's move on. Hold on, slide. Now, it says that her dyslexia didn't get diagnosed until adulthood. So school got harder and she continued falling behind until she eventually decided to drop out. You can see where the problem comes from. Inability to teach her how she learned. Her mother gave her money to go to museums and sit in on lectures to try to continue her education that way. Along the way, she developed tricks to walk around her dyslexia. Now, this is what should have been taught by her teachers, but she had to grow into adulthood and develop those tricks by herself. Like in grade school, Godbrook found she learned best by having someone read the script to her and memorize her lines that way. I'm sure you can imagine it. She has done so much in the entertainment world. How has she been able to do that, reading her script when she can read? Now, here is her secret. For her, for her books, she likes to dictate instead. Okay, she likes to dictate instead of writing and then sit down with an editor. Now, when asked how she thinks dyslexia affected her, now here was her question. I think perhaps it made me more introspective. It made me more thoughtful. Maybe slightly slower in how I do things because it takes me a minute sometimes to figure things out. It wasn't all bad, but she's happy that dyslexic kids today have more role models and more opportunities for different kinds of learning. I can see how her abilities were able to help her in standing out, even in the entertainment industry as an actor. For her, you just reading script to her. She didn't have to read them, but if you could just read her script to her, to get into that character and she's able to deliver very well. She credits teachers as being a major source of help and inspiration. So I hope we have teachers here because these kids need you the most. Teachers have always been to me the brightest light in the neighborhood. Without them, the world is so much smaller for kids, exactly. And I believe that with them, the world is gonna be big even for kids who have like, now imagine all over the world, all over Africa, we have teachers who understand what this is. Imagine the amazing kids with dyslexia we're going to raise with your brain and the gifts they come with doing amazing things for this world, not just for Africa. And that is our aim. And that is why we are doing no dyslexia, K-N-O-W, so that at least a lot of people who get to know what dyslexia is, the most especially teachers. And we hope that this word go far. So if you're not following um, One Word Africa on social media, you should, so you can participate in this challenge and you can create awareness by using the hashtag no dyslexia, so a lot of people will get to know more. Now let me move from uh, the United States. Let me come down to Africa, Nigeria. Where you be wondering that? Do we have talented kids? who have this issue here. So we do. 19 year old, that was then, he was 19, he should be about 22 now. Then he was a senior secondary school student of Federal Government College, FGC of Bomocho. He was born in January. Let me turn my time. Okay. He was born in January 1998, a native of Oyo State. So he was raised in, excuse me, in Ogbomosho in Oyo State. 
for the Red District of the State of Spain. Having suffered dyslexia from boyhood, he was never given any chance by people around him. But against all odds and with the support of his mother and teachers, he fought his disability. He can now read, spell, and write well. Now, have you two ever wondered? Okay, maybe you don't know, but we have a lot of dyslexics who have written books. Uh, I know of, and these are people I know. I know of Angela. I know of uh, Theo. There are a lot of them who have. Have you ever wondered how someone can have a reading difficulty and yet be able to read? That's a question you should keep asking yourself as you go through this slide. But much more importantly, Toby had seen, discovered himself, nurtured his talent, and built numerous electrical appliances, including a solar powered lawnmower. A solar powered grinding machine, a foot mat alert, among other things. Now, while he was going through all of this and school was so difficult, he had to channel all of his energy into creating all of this. And without being taught, look at the amazing what he was able to do. Now, imagine he had teachers to even put him through even much more. He said it was tough for me. So he said of his experience before he found a solution to his dyslexic condition. He said, whenever I saw an alphabet, I mistook it for another. Toby, at 14 years of age, had to repeat classes because he could, he could not read or write. Now, if you have a child who has to repeat class, I always say, the problem is not with the child. When it comes to learning, the problem lies with the teacher. And if we have teachers who have this mindset, understanding that if a child fails, I have failed at my job, we're going to have teachers who go out of their way to look for solutions for this kid. Now, he kept repeating because he could not read or write. No one realized he was suffering from a learning difficulty, and it was indeed a complex situation. Some teachers in school believe that Toby was under a spell, you know, in Africa. You understand this if you're here in Nigeria, especially. And this was the story I had to believe. That's a teacher, Mr. Ishola, Toby's private teacher, mentor, and coach. He said, Fortunately for me, watching the movie like Stars on Earth changed my psyche. Now, how many have watched that movie? Let me know if you watch this movie. This is a, a must watch movie. This movie is quite old, but still very relevant. Do we have anybody in the house who has watched it? I'm seeing a lot of emails. I want some engagement too. So don't wait or give a thumbs up if you watch this movie. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Say. You should watch this movie if you haven't. Should watch. I, I love to watch it again. I also watch it with your kids with dyslexia. I mean, there is something it does to them. I love to watch it the most, especially with them. You know, if you if you've ever if you have a child who is about eight, 10, it's time for them to understand why they have a problem. And if you don't know how to tell them what is happening, you can just watch this movie with them. And from there, the discussion can come up and they understand that they don't exactly have a terrible problem. What they have is a different way of learning. And this helps them a lot. Because at that age, they're beginning to struggle with low self-esteem and wondering why they're different, hearing people call them dumb. It's important you let them know what is happening so they can also stand up for them. So the teacher said, we start, to watch, we start to watch the movie with Toby and I asked him what his inference was. Then he told me this was exactly what was wrong with him. Can you see? The first thing I did was to carry out a background research on his learning history. That's the teacher talking to us. Mr. Ishola also disclosed that he made contact with medical professionals to examine the situation and scheduled personal coaching sessions with a boy using digital flashcards designed with PowerPoint. Now, if you're a teacher in the house, you can see all that this teacher went through. It had nothing to do with what the school gave him or what the school didn't give him. I always say that teaching is a sacrificial job. If you're here for the money, I am so, so sorry. You're going to lose out. Okay, teachers ask me, when I, when I train on this lecture, they ask me, okay, so how do I get this resource for my children? if my school is not getting it. I'm like, this child has become a personal project for you, okay? So you're going to look for the least expensive materials and you're going to create for this kid. Because children who have seen differences, who have stood out despite this condition as, as, as children who have parents or teachers who have gone the extra mile. So if you're a teacher, I want to ask you this question. Are you ready to go the extra mile? 
translate things here so they we explore the one node application for synchronizing exercises via PC and mobile device and join the digital link in future. We gathered videos from YouTube about people who have overcome the dyslexia challenge. Now, this is someone who wasn't even trained on how to teach children with dyslexia, so you don't even have an excuse, do you? No, you don't. The Scrabble game was also helpful for letter identification and word formation. We equally watched inspiring movies like Attila, the Bee, which for this depiction to perfection, he added. So can you see? I mean, if you say there is a way out, you will always find, I made a post about leaving no child behind, you know, no child left behind. And I was like, if you have 15 kids in a class and 13 of them have gotten a subject, the subject matter of what you're teaching and two haven't, it is your responsibility as a teacher to make sure the two get to it. And the teacher told me, I mean, she wasn't even ashamed. I was embarrassed for her. But that's the mindset most teachers have. She told me that if she has a class of 15 and 13 have caught the lesson, she's not going to see herself. Like how we say in Nigeria, I can't come and see myself with the two. She has tried with the 13. That is not how it should be. Look at all what this teacher has to go through, putting his mind towards seeing this particular child. The teacher explained further that it was really difficult and frustrating helping Toby overcome his challenge in the beginning. This tells you that it's not going to be easy. This is a struggling, but you're there to help. Adding that he almost gave up on, on him. However, Toby's attitude to learning and resilience, Mr. Shala said, were highly interested. Now, interestingly, every child, okay, the kids I've met with dyslexia are children who love to learn, who love to read. And when parents or teachers come to me and tell me this child does not like to read, after an informal assessment, you get to realize that it, it's not that the child doesn't like to read, but the child has come to that stage of struggle in their life that they detest it. Why? Because they connect books to their inability. They connect books to being called dumb. They connect books to not having achieved so much when they can see their peers really and they can read. So it becomes something that they are frustrated about, not that it's something they don't like. Okay? But they just get tired and get frustrated. And I've come to realize that when I talk to these kids and I show them that it's possible for them to learn, their love for books return back. In fact, this is one method I use for one of my students for behavior management. When she starts misbehaving, I'm like, I am I'm not going to come teach you again. Oh my, you're going to see her crying and crying and crying because she wants to learn, she wants to read. So if you have a child and you think they're lazy, no, they're not. There is something else happening behind. Mr. Ishola helped Toby overcome his disability through intense coaching. How are you helping to help that child with the learning issue that you've met? These are questions, historical questions that you should ask yourself. Okay, now dyslexia sign. Remember where I started? I said most times we always look at the inability of children with dyslexia. And that's not all that there is. I mean, them being unable to read is just 1% of what is happening. There is so much 99% happening that you need to know. So that's all we're starting off with their strengths. So these are some of the signs that you see with children who have dyslexia. Although their unique brain architecture and unusual wearing makes reading, writing, and spelling difficult, which is just 91% of the 99%. Most people with dyslexia have gifts in areas controlled by the right hemisphere of the brain. The right side controls, which are their artistic skills, their athletic ability. And this is true. I mean, I have sat down to observe my kids. I have sat down to observe adults that have met with dyslexia and I've noticed that this is so true. Musical ability, mechanical ability, people skills. I'm happy we have dyslexia here too. So I mean they will concur with all I'm saying. Three B visual spatial skills, vivid imagination, intuition, creativity. Oh my so creative. Can you see how Ishan answered that math question in the classroom? Who who does that? You know, I always say that when you look at the mistakes that children with dyslexia make, I mean, look at it from the positive side and just try to correct it. 
look at the way he was thinking about that math problem. None of the kids in that classroom were able to think about it that way. So what he needed was simply someone to direct him in the right path to understanding what that math problem is. And his creativity to solving that math blew me away. Global thinking, curiosity, they want to know. Uh, now look at some of the good careers that benefit them. Yeah, we have exactly. Now that's Rosalyn. Rosalyn is dyslexic, just in case you didn't know. And you can see she, she just felt, wrote that sentence very correctly. <laughs> so some of you that think dyslexic people go all around making errors all the time because they are dumb, not at all. So you find people with dyslexia in every field. However, many excel and become superstars in the following fields, architecture, interior or exterior design, psychology, teaching, marketing and sales, culinary art. Yes, Rosalind, that's what you, you did, right? Rather, that's what you do. Culinary art, woodworking, carpentry, performing arts, athletics. They love athletics. Exactly. Thank you. And we have um, Donnie here, too. At least I know those two. Music. Scientific research, engineering, computers. I have a student, she's, he's about 12. He loves to code, coding. C -O -D. I can't even do that. How old am I? I can't do that. So if I'm going to, um, going to say because he can't read his dumb, then let's say because I can't code, I am dumb as well. They're good in electronics, uh, photography, graphic art, and all of that. So you can see that not being able to read is just 1% of what comes with dyslexia. Okay, oh, Rosalyn loves computers, so great. We have over 99% of other amazing things that dyslexia can do. Like we're here today, one word Africa. I mean, Tony is someone who is dyslexic. They See the amazing work she has been able to do with One World Africa and every other thing she does. I mean, Tony, I think you should also share your story with us after we're done. <laughs> so we look, we look at the amazing things these people can do. And I wanted you to, first of all, understand that dyslexia is a gift before taking you to all the struggles they have. Because like I keep saying, that struggle is just 1% of what happens to dyslexia. You have over 99% of great things that we can bring out of, out of this kid. I would love, love to give an example of my sister from Congo, Sandra, and what's her dream. Her dream is that the same way we have very popular dyslexic in Europe, in the US, doing amazing things, changing the world. We're also going to raise dyslexic here in Africa and in Nigeria who are doing the same thing. And how can we do this? We can do this by creating awareness, by letting people know that it is a learning difficult is a different way of learning not a way to push this kid out of school and let them um, go do other things i mean how do i explain this not a way to push them away but a way to let them know that see yes you can read but there is so much more inside that brain and while i teach you how to read i'm going to make sure that great star that superstar that is in you comes out as well yeah, you all should give Donny a hand, you should. No, that is. So now we talk about the signs, okay? I love to, I love to um, let people know that these keywords should guide you, combination, reoccurrence, and persistence. Why? Because I don't want you going out of here and labeling kids and saying, oh, this is one sign that um, Blessing mentioned, this child is dyslexic. Or, oh, this is one sign that this lesson said, this child is dyslexic, no. With all the signs that I'm going to mention, keep these three things in mind. Combination, there has to be a combination of the signs, not just one. There has to be a combination of two, three, four, five, six, seven, thereabouts. And then there has to be a reoccurrence. It means this keeps occurring again and again. And then persistence, meaning you've tried your best in your own way, but it keeps happening. So as we go into the signs of dyslexia in the reading aspect, we've looked at the signs in the brain accent. I'm sure you enjoy that part. So let's look at signs from preschool, kindergarten, and grade level. Delayed speech. Most kids, okay, 
So uh, please, the moderator, some questions are coming up. Just um, pick them out for me, and then when I'm done during the question, answer and question session, I can respond to them. So just highlight them and pick them out, and can ask me when I'm done, so I don't forget or it doesn't get lost in the chat session. So most kids who are dyslexic had the late speech. Now remember combination, reoccurrence, and persistence. When you see a child with delayed speech, you don't go saying, you are dyslexic. Mm -mm, no. As a matter of fact, these signs do not give you the right to label a child dyslexic. It just tells you that there are red flags and that child needs, it needs an assessment for us to show what is happening. And then inability to follow a reading or reproduce it. So something as easy as that could be hard for a child with dyslexia to follow or roll and clap. They are either clapping before or after and all of that. Difficulty in learning songs and poems. And then they mix up sounds and multi-syllabic words. For example, animal instead of animal. Now remember, it is important for you to remember combination, reoccurrence and persistence. Why? Because at, some, at a particular age in a child's life, they get to miss their multi-syllabic words. The way it becomes a red flag is when there is a combination of different signs. So just imagine I have a child who is who has late speech, who is unable to follow a rhythm, who has difficulty in learning songs, and then who is mixing up their multi-syllabic sounds. I can say, okay, there is a red flag here. But if everything is perfect and the child is just mixing up the sounds and they are in preschool, most kids at that age do that. But like I always like to tell parents and teachers, I know it's cute. When kids pronounce green as green, you know, I would just laugh about it. But I always say it's not too early to start, okay? They may not have all of the sounds that they, they are able to call those words at that particular time, but it's important you let them know that there's a right way for calling it. Now, when you smile and you laugh without correcting it, you're automatically, unconsciously telling them, telling them that you pronounce that word correctly. So for instance, when they call Amina, and then you laugh about it, I mean, they're like, oh, wow, that's like a yes, that's word, that word is correct. But by the time you say, no, baby, it's animal, they might not be able to call it as animal, but right in their mind, you have registered that this is the right way to pronounce that word. And as they grow older and form those sounds, they pronounce it. Very important. And then they struggle to name familiar objects, and they use general words like thing, give me my thing. And I always tell mothers too parents and teachers. When the child comes to you and say, give me my thing, no, let them call what they want. What do you want? Let them call that thing. Let them call the name. Don't just go ahead and give it to them. And then they have trouble remembering sequence. Yes, that's exactly why you can send someone with dyslexia, especially a child. Go downstairs, go into the kitchen, look up at the cabinet. You see a red ball. Bring it for me. A child goes to the kitchen and that's all. You can't remember the next thing. <laughs> So when, when all of this happens, now these signs are for you to, to know when this happens with your child so that you don't get frustrated. For me now, when it happens, I just laugh because I know exactly what is happening. And instead of just giving you the whole information, I break it down for you. So first, go downstairs. Go into, are you in the kitchen now? Okay, good. Can you see the cabinet? Great. Open it. Can you see the red ball? Great. Bring it for me. Perfect. Now they have trouble learning letters and the sounds that make. Remember, we said dyslexia has a foundational problem in phonics. So this is always a basic. And then confusion over directionality. They confuse left, they confuse right, mix yesterday, mix uh, tomorrow, mix under versus ago, and all of that. And then they have trouble sounding out new words and quickly recognizing common ones. They also have trouble remembering how words are spelled and applying spelling rules in writing. They also have trouble learning letters and the sound they make. I've mentioned this. And they avoid, they avoid reading whenever possible, or they get upset or frustrated when reading. Now, I told you about it. They're avoiding this. Why? Because of the struggles that come with it, not because they don't love to read. And I'm telling you this from experience and working with lots of kids with dyslexia. They can read a word on one page, but won't recognize it on the next page. This is, 
So, so you shouldn't get frustrated when this happens, okay? But you just explain that this word is can, k, a, n. All right, blend it, call it, they blend it, k, a, n. Perfect. You open to the next page, they skip that same word and they can't remember. I mean, it comes with the package. So rather than getting frustrated, look for strategies that can help them, okay? Then note phonic that can't or won't sound out an unknown word. I mean, teachers meet me with this. They tell me, this, this child, but the child knows their sound. They know that A makes a sound, A, B makes a sound, B. But putting words together becomes a problem. Yes, knowing the sound, the phonics for each letter is just the beginning. The major work comes with blending those sounds together and making words out, out of them. And then reading comprehension may be low. And I explained this before, why? Because it spends so much energy focusing on how to decode the words, decode the means, how to call a word, like reading. Re, r, e, d, e, so what I'm doing, I'm trying to decode. So they spend so much energy on that that they lose comprehension, okay? And so that same text, if you read that text out of them verbally, they might be able to tell you more about it. They might comprehend more than letting them read on their own. Then of course, the D, the D, the N, U, or M, W is the classic, is a classic um, confusion that these kids have. Now, while I love to give an example of a chair, probably you're at home now and you're sitting on the chair. For me, I'm sitting on the chair. Now imagine you turn that, you turn that chair upside down. Is this still a chair? You see a chair, right? Don't worry, feel free to drop your, your comments. Okay, I see them as a pop-up. Is this still a chair? It is. If I if I make it a face right, you see a chair, right? No matter the position I put that chair, it still remains a chair. And this is one of the confusions that children with dyslexia have with letters that look the same. I mean, this is B, but it's like a chair. So if I turn B to look like a D, it's still a chair. So you see B. This is U. If I turn it upside down to look like an N, it is still a U. So please, what are you talking about? So that's a confusion. I need to look for strategies to explain to them that no, when it comes to letters, this doesn't work. I hope you're getting something. They substitute similar looking words, e.g. wild for white. This happens. When reading, they substitute words that mean the same thing, e.g. trip for the journey. So I'm telling you all of this signs so that when you see them, one, you mark them as red flags and you tell whoever is involved that I think this child needs to be, uh, to be assessed. And then two, if you already have a child like this, you shouldn't see that something's Okay, like I said, it comes with a package and it's just the one percent of the ninety-nine. And then written work shows signs of uncertainty, numerous erasures. You see their work canceling because they're not sure of the spelling. And then misspells even when copying something from the board. Exactly, this happens. And you're wondering, can't you see what is on the board? You might want to think that they have a vision problem. No, they do not have a vision problem. Now, what causes dyslexia? Why do all these things happen? Remember, when we we're talking about the science of dyslexia, we spoke about the amazing things we can do, and then which is the 99% of dyslexia, and then we spoke about the 1%, which has to do with their inability to read. What causes this? One, neurological, okay? It has been proven that the brain of a dyslexic person is structurally and functionally different from that of others. Studies have shown that the inborn wiring system of the brain related to developing mental skills is different in dyslexia, and this is the root cause of dyslexia. I'm not a medical person, but I love to I love to study about the brain of the dyslexia because it excites me. I'm like, wow, so much is happening here, and it helps me see my children and my students, all my children, helps me see them, see them differently. But you need to understand that first of all, it is a brain issue, okay? It is something they can help when it comes to reading, and we're here to help them and to give them strategies that can work. And then also, Jane, recent studies suggest that their reading difficulties are caused by identifiable genetic variation. This genetic alteration is transmitted within families that create faulty wiring in quotes in certain areas of the brain. Okay? But then, luckily, most of our brain development occurs after we are born when we interact with our environment. This means that the right teaching techniques can actually retrain the brain 
especially when used early. And this is what we call neuroelasticity, the ability of the brain. You can stretch the brain, I mean, at that tender age. That's why early intervention is right now. See, when people talk about cure, early intervention, in quote, is a cure for special needs. Let's say in bracket, not just learning difficulties, but other special needs too. Because at that tender age, there is so much you can do with the brain. You can retrain the brain, okay? So when, why we always start with the science from kindergarten and preschool, because we believe that if these kids are, are, are noticed at this particular age, so much can be done that when they're grown, it'll be hard for someone to even know that they're dyslexic, except they tell you. But usually, we wait until when it's time to read and write. That's when they're in grade level. We can see that, oh, my child can't read. My child can't write. I mean, grade level is even better. For most of them, I've seen two, 26 year old and a 20 year old. And my attention was called. Why? Because it was time for them to write what we call here in Nigeria, NECO, and in Africa, YX. And then there's an exam that moves them to the tertiary institution. And of course, you know, like this adult go into the tertiary institution. They won't be able to cope. They start looking for help. But the best time to look for help is when these kids are young in preschool and kindergarten. So what are the types of dyslexia? Now there are different types of dyslexia. But like I said, I love to work with something that is research-based. There are a lot of papers right now on the internet and on different websites looking at the types of dyslexia. But um, they have not been accurately, and put it that way, recognized by international bodies, at least the international bodies of this lecture that I follow. So while I talk about all of that when I'm in a small circle, I like to talk about things that are more research-based when I'm in a global circle like this one. So types of dyslexia, visual processing dyslexia. Now it is not a problem with the eye, but a neurological difficulty with visually processing an output of letters and words. Now this type of dyslexia, only help us in knowing the kind of services or help to give the kids. Okay, so you know what to do if the child is having more of those signs. And phonological, seventy-five percent of people with dyslexia show signs of phonological problem. Now I mentioned that. That's why it's very important that a a, a, a dyslexia teacher or a teacher who has with dyslexia is well tutored in phonics. And then auditory. Many people with dyslexia have trouble remembering what they have heard. Now, remember, it's not that they can't hear, but they have trouble remembering what they have heard. Now, if you understand that your child with dyslexia is possessing more of the skills, you will know what to do. So you can see why what well, the different type of dyslexia is majorly focused at helping, right? And then processing speed. I always tell teachers, figure out your child's processing speed. We all have a processing speed, okay? You know, what's happened sometimes that you might have a child whose processing speed is one minute, at least at the beginning. You can work on an individual's processing speed with a lot of games and activities. But at the beginning, let's say it's one minute. But then you're asking them a question in class, especially, and you're, you, can't, you can't wait for the answer. Can't you hear me? Can't you give me the answer now? So why the child is trying to, to take out the time and think about the question, you're hitting them hard with your voice, shouting, and they just end up losing it. So you need to understand that some kids have um, a processing issues, okay? Processing speed is a pace at which you take information, make sense of, sense of it, and begin to respond. And when I got to understand this, okay. And when I got to understand this, I mean, I had to give some of my kids some time, and it was working. So when I asked a question, I wait for a while, and I'm like, are you thinking about it and they're like yes okay go on now keep thinking i'm waiting 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 after a while they get to the time hmm. they took it two minutes three minutes four minutes to get it and i look at activities and then working memory working memory like in stores and you mentor arithmetic or something that i do i mean an example, I always love to give you an example. Okay, a number. So if I ask you to dial a number now, 0378 67314. Your working memory is what? 
helps you remember this number I just called. Your key memory keeps an information and then brings it out when you leave them. And most people have been diagnosed with dyslexia, have issues with their working memory. Another example is when you come out of this house, go left, walk for five minutes, take right, you see a red house. Pass by that red house and take a turn by your right. Who can remember what I just said? Now, your ability to remember what I just said is um, what is working here now is your working memory. You store an information and you're able to reuse it. Now, for most kids who have dyslexia, this is very hard. And that's why some teachers keep complaining. I taught something today. I came back yesterday. The child does not remember a thing. Now, if you understand that working memory is at work here, you're going to look for strategies to help them remember. All right. So as I come to the end, I think this is one of my, my shortest presentations. I'm proud of myself. I haven't clocked an hour yet. All right. So what is the treatment for this? Like they may be wondering, okay, you mentioned all of these things, the amazing things these kids can do. You told us about the 99% of the great work they can do. And the 1% of the things they can do that they need to be taught. So what is the solution? Well, first, you need to understand that uh, one dyslexia is not a disease, so I won't really call it treatment, I'll call it an intervention. And then it is a lifelong condition, okay? It means it is it's a gift. Do you understand? So when people fight uh, um, against this, against saying it's not a lifelong condition, I say, please, if I'm dyslexic and I have all those 99%, those amazing things, and then I have just 1% of inability to read. And then you tell me dyslexia is not live now. Meaning if dyslexia goes, then the 99% goes to, I'm going to say, no, give me my dyslexia. I want my dyslexia back. <laughs> so it is a good thing, okay? It is lifelong and it is amazing. It only becomes a problem when we don't know how to teach it. Remember, it is just 1% that has to do with the inability to read. So the first step is early intervention, like I said. I mean, if you're able to know, see all of these signs in these kids at a very tender age, you're able to retrain the brain and work with the brain so much that when the child, even in their grade level or in college, it's hard to know that there are any problems. Why? Because you taught them strategies to help them. Like if you talk to dyslexic that I've spoken to, a lot of them that I'm friends with, it's not that the problem is gone, but have found strategies. I mean, recently I've been speaking a lot with Lady Rosa. She's here too. Lady Rosa, can you wave, just wave for us, wave for us. And she's been telling me the, strat the strategies she uses in helping herself. And even and doing it, just doing it. There was a time we were talking about an app that helps to check spelling. So you can see that they have found strategies and ways to help themselves, right? So if these kids are taught all of these strategies at an early age, I mean, they grew up not having so much problems like some of our kids that have. And then structural literacy. What did I write that? Structural literacy problem using the multi-sensory app. That should be structural literacy program using the multi-sensory app. Hello, Rosalind. Hi. So that's her. She's also dyslexic. She's doing amazing things. Spreading dyslexia well. So now. The major thing that works for this kid is making sure your literacy intervention is structured, okay? And why do I say that? I mean, how many of us can remember how we learned how to read? I always think about that. And if you're in Nigeria, the only thing I can remember is a Macmillan text. We attended a public school. I don't know what private schools we were reading then anyway. Where we got to cram the stories, popular stories, like if you're born in the 1990s, you, you'll be familiar with these popular stories like Ali, like, um, what was this other girl's name? Simbi, and all of them. I would just got to cram those stories. But for people in my class, my peers who had learning issues, which I didn't even know, that was a very big problem for them. And right in the middle of it, they had to drop out of school. But I can't even remember how I was taught how to read. But look at me today, I can read. Now, that is because I'm not dyslexic. But for a person who has dyslexia, there has to be a structured way of teaching them how to read. And when you do this, you do this through the multi-sensory approach. What does that mean? 
It means they should be able to see it, they should be able to feel it, they should be able to manipulate it, they should be able to hear it. Have I said that? Yes, your audio, uh, visual, kinesthetics, uh, tactile. So whatever you're teaching, I always tell teachers that if you could just start with this. Remember Toby's teacher, whom we were talking about earlier, how he never received any foundational training in dyslexia. But the method he used, those were more sensory methods that he used. From just watching a movie, he was able to, to come up creative to help his students. So whatever you are teaching in the classroom where you have children with learning issues, ask yourself, how can they see this thing I'm teaching? How can they feel it tactile? How can they hear it audio? How can they manipulate it and set it? And believe me, if you are very diligent, religious about this, you're going to be helping your child 50% already. Okay? So, I think I've done my own hour, and I'm sure you're able to get things from here. So I'm going to hand over to the um, One Word Africa team. Yes, I'm going to hand over to them. Uh, I'm done for now. I'll talk more again. So let me pause and take water. I'm going to be on my camera, please, right? Um, thank you so much, uh, Madam Blessing, for uh, that very amazing presentation. I believe it was very educative, even for me. I mean, I, I thought I knew quite some, quite, quite too much about dyslexia, but I mean, I was still able to, to gain so much from your presentation. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that. Um, participants, um, please kindly send in your questions. Um, on the meeting chat, you're also um, welcome to ask if you want to um, verbally ask the questions, just send a wave and then I would um, call on you as well. We have a question currently um, by Oyin Kwan Omi How do we help dyslexics? Um, this is for you, Madam Blessin. How do we help dyslexics su succeed in the Nigerian okay that is rather rigid and does not make allowance for them to access tertiary education. Um, if you have, according to if you have challenges with reading, you shall find all levels of Okay, your line is breaking. Okay. Your line is breaking, but I'm trying to see, but I think I saw a question like that. I'm okay. trying to see. Okay, how do we have dyslexic succeed in the Nigerian system that is rather rigid and does not make allowance for them to access tertiary institution. If you have challenges with reading, we sure will find all levels and UTME. <laughs> Herculean, exactly. Now that is why we're doing what we're doing now. Now in this uh, event, um, the one word, uh, one word Africa is doing is to create awareness. So the first thing is that we need you, okay? Who asked this question? Onye Khan. Okay, I hope I pronounced that correctly. The first is that we need you to help us create awareness so that more people can know about this. A lot of people are not aware about dyslexia. I mean, you'll be surprised. The last time I checked, only about 2% of Nigerian teachers know what dyslexia is. And right now, as I talk to you, as I talk to you, dyslexia is one of, dyslexia is the most learning disability or rather especially let me put it that way found in the classroom so it's been said that in the classroom you have that's where you find dyslexia the most so if you have this kid looking at you every day i mean we already know that one in five for some communities and for others one in ten it means in every five kids or ten kids you have a child with dyslexia and if you have that number of people with dyslexia and you have just two percent of teachers knowing what dyslexia is that alone is a problem. So first it starts with awareness and that's what we're doing this month. So advice, everyone here listening to me, please follow One Word Africa, okay? Talk about dyslexia, what is dyslexia? For instance, you can talk about what you learned here today, what are the things you learned? And then hashtag uh, no dyslexia and then make sure you also mention One Word Africa. We're hoping that with that in this month of June, we get to spread dyslexia awareness. Now we don't have to wait till October. October is Dyslexia Awareness Month, right? Yes, we don't have to wait till October. Every day, every month is Dyslexia Awareness Month. So it first of all starts with that. And then, like I said, and then secondly, it starts as an 
a teacher sacrificing because the truth is that we have, although we have some uh, um, laid down laws for children with these learning issues. I mean, when we, uh, my mentor is here, Ms. Lola Nikki, there was a time we were with the law makers. And we noticed that all of these things were written down. So it's like they just copied from the US and they pasted it into our documents. But they don't put these things to work. And I'm sure this is one of the things one what Africa is doing too. Before uh, all of this happened, they had plans of going to different states, talking to different uh, leaders about all of this. And so it means we all have to put our hands together. And then recently I also realized and someone was telling me that the YN actually, this old level, they actually have a place where you're feeling that is, if you need an accommodation, they're giving accommodation. Now, when I talk about accommodation, I'm not talking about court facilities. I'm talking about accommodating the kids. Now, remember, because this lecture is not an IQ problem, a child might have challenges with reading, but it doesn't mean that they can't be in school. So, for instance, if I have a 12 year old who has challenges with reading, I'm not going to pick that child and put them in the kindergarten classroom because they can't read yet. No, they're still going to be in the same class with their peers, but they're going to have accommodations. What does that mean? They're going to mean, aside, aside from just having their notes, they're also going to have their notes recorded so that during exams they get to read. And then also during exams, since they can read to comprehend, since they spend all of their energy, like I explained earlier, trying to read, and then at the end they totally lose out of comprehension, we're going to have someone who can read those questions out for them. Right? But of course, in Nigeria, you have to follow all of this up. You have to fight for it. I mean, because some people will tell you it's cheating and different things, but that's what we call accommodation and modification. So first, we have to help by spreading the message, okay, like we're doing now. And then two, in your own way, if you're a teacher, you have to make sacrifices for these kids and you have to advocate for them, okay, until it gets to the leaders and then they make the decision. Because like I've been learning for the past few days, everything rises and falls on leadership. So no matter what we're able to do here, we need that noise to get to the leaders. So that they can have all of this in place and all of these accommodations for the kids. I was reading on one of the people I follow in this lecture in the US, and she was saying for them in the US, it is no longer a knowledge problem. They have passed the knowledge problem and they are now in the action problem. But for us here in Nigeria, first we're, we're in the knowledge problem. People don't even know about this. We have to first of all make sure people know because if we go to, if we go to the government fighting for this kid, we have just we even don't know what it is yet. So we need more people to know so that together we can collaborate and build systems that work for these children. So the first is knowledge, and that is what One World Africa is doing here today, and that is why we're all gathered here today. And then we can then move further to the action where America seems to be stuck right now because they know what it is, but now um, the action is what they're fighting for. So I hope I answered that question. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, again, Madam Blessing, for um, insights. Um, we have another question by mm -hmm. Jumi Akinsonya Akimbaladi. A child finding it hard to comprehend or answer comprehension passage, is it still dyslexia? And how can we help? Okay, like I mentioned, the signs when I was talking about this, like there has to be a combination of signs. Is it just a child's inability to comprehend the passage? There has to be other things. What other signs have you noticed? Okay, because we can't just pick one thing and say because um, this child has this, then this child has dyslexia. So is it just comprehension? We have to look deeper. And that's why the, the next step is always to find a professional who can access that child and figure out exactly what the problem is. So you want to pay more attention to some of the signs I mentioned. You can actually check uh, other websites, understood.org. You can also check out the book, Dyslexia Bible. I mean, I'm looking forward to that book. That book is gonna blow our minds in this country. It is written by one of your amazing special needs, um, but how do I qualify her? She's the mother of special needs in Africa and the world at large, okay? And, and that book, I believe, is also going to help a lot. It's a book you should put your eye down for and 
and I mean, be the first to get it when it comes out. That's going to help you to look more into the signs for dyslexia and even the ones I've mentioned here. It's the ones I've mentioned, that's not just all, okay? That's not just all at all. There are more of them. You can check uh, on the student. Yeah, I trust their I trust I trust their work. I trust their information. So you can look for those signs there. You can look at the ones I've also mentioned and then look forward to the dyslexia by written by Lola and Nikki. I mean just go on Facebook, look for Lola and Nikki. Just go on the internet type with Lola and Nikki. You're going to see her and you're going to see everything about the book. So you need to know, we need to know more. Comprehension is not, that's not all. Is there more to the problem? Then let's know. And if it's only comprehension, then there are strategies that will help. It doesn't necessarily mean your child is left. Wonderful. Thank you so much again. Um, we have another question by Deborah Olajiton. How can we motivate dyslexic readers when they get frustrated? Okay, can you hear that question is breaking? Is it in the chat? Yes, it's in the chat. Um, I think okay, it's, I can hear you now. Let's hear it. Okay. It's by Deborah Olajiton. How can okay, we what are the... motivate dyslexic readers when they get frustrated? Okay. Well, when they get frustrated, first they need to understand what is happening to them. I keep saying that. If you have um, a child in grade level who is dyslexic, it's important they know what is happening and like i say if you can explain it to them then just watch the movie like stars on it with them you can ask them questions about ishan i mean most kids have taught what like they love that movie and they love him so much you know why they can connect that oh this is not struggling with it's not just me there is a boy here ishan who is struggling with it too and see how amazing he is you know i mean ishan is just a cute character all right so they need to first of all know that there is a problem okay and that they need to understand that that's just one percent of the problem because most times kids just know that they can read and their peers can read they don't get to understand the amazing things they can do also i mean i have kids with dyslexia and they are all talented in one way or the other i have one that loves to make dresses and she wants to be a fashion what they call them now a fashion designer when she grows up and we're already working on that, okay? We make sure we include all our learning activities into fashion. I'm telling the mom, you don't have to wait till she's done with school. You can start preparing her now. I have one who loves to bake. She bakes already. She, she, bakes, she bakes her birthday cake the last time. And I'm talking to the parents about uh, getting her more help so that she can get to um, know this skill the most. Okay, so first you need to let them know that problem. They remember, that's just 1%. These are the amazing things they can do. And then two, they need to have what we call the growth mindset. Okay, what's a growth mindset? There is a problem. I'm having issues reading right now. That if I'm taught the right way, if I get the right strategies, I'm able to overcome this. Okay? So first, that's why usually when we're having events, dyslexia health, when we're having dyslexia awareness events, we also make sure we have a session for kids. I will bring a, 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 a coach who deals with children, especially in, uh, about their self-esteem, talk about them so that they can understand. Because a lot of kids are struggling with that. So you need to, you need to focus more on their strength. Okay, I know I'm saying so much, but I hope you've been able to get some points. One, let them know there is a problem. Okay, let them also understand that that's just 1% of the problem. There's a 99 awesome ways about dyslexia. Two, find out what they are good at and invest your time in it too. So let it let every time not just be reading, 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 reading. Okay, I mean that's just one thing. Yes, let's learn how to read. But I love to bake. I love to run. I love color art. I love to do fashion design. How about that? Let's do that also. Okay, and then growth mindset. Okay, I might not be able to read now, but that's why I am here as your teacher to help you and as we work together, you'll be able to read and show them the amazing things that dyslexia. Are doing. I mean, look at Doni doing amazing things. Look at Rosa doing amazing things. I mean, they get to see these people doing great things. And I mean, they're, they're excited. What Disney, who does a lot of animation, kids love animation. I mean, they get to understand that, wow, what Disney also had dyslexia, or rather dyslexic. 
I mean, then there is hope. So you just, I think it's first time to teach us. If you understand what dyslexia is, there is a way you're even going to teach children are going to feel special. When I see my students, I see them special. I mean, they are the stars. I'm like, you're a star. You can't read them, man. You're a star. <laughs> I hope I answered that. I know I talk too much when it comes to dyslexia. Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> Um, thank you so much. <laughs> Next yes, question. Yes, and then reward. So I mentioned something there. Okay. Reward them. Um, thank you. The next question is um, by Labu Adetumbi. Good afternoon. What can be done where the um, student, the dyslexic student, is at um, university level? Okay, for me, I believe that's even better because they're adults and I mean, it is right in their hands. Uh, I met, okay, on the group, we had someone come to talk to us about his story with dyslexia. He was maneuvering through school. I mean, he, he used to cheat. You know, during exams, he would cheat, come with extra papers and all of that. And until the didn't even know he was dyslexic okay they didn't even know he was dyslexic so when he even came up and was talking about his story on a group his former class were surprised they were like how did you do this and he said he was cheating i mean high by strong papers different ways right on his hand <laughs> you know all this giraffe they do all of that but when he got to tertiary institution, he was going on like the second level, second level. He felt like, you know, he was like, I mean, can't even read. Nobody knows. But then, uh, he now said, find a way. I mean, he met a girlfriend. It's a love story. A girl. And he was interested. I was like, you know, I haven't told anybody because I love you and we have a future ahead. I think you should, I can't read. And the girl was like, oh, wow, okay. Have you heard about dyslexia before? I can find out what dyslexia is. He left cool because he couldn't read the thing. He was just there for, for just, just in school. And recently he was talking to me that, is it possible for him to go back to school? He said, yes, it is very possible for you to go back to school. Because now you're an adult. You can even learn how to teach yourself how to read, okay? So if you have an individual who is already in the special position, one, what is going to help them a lot is accommodation, okay? So instead of reading, instead of having all of those documents they have, they need to have a recorded version of it. And while they are accommodating them on all of those things, they need to be receiving a structured literacy intervention. I know in Nigeria, they call that adult education. But I've, I've taught, I, I teach 26-year-olds, year 28-year-olds. So, I mean, it's not too late for anybody to learn. So you don't need to drop out of school. You just need to make sure you have accommodation. Like for students, of course, the school doesn't have the time to read and record, record her notes. So I have to basically do it. I record her notes. She brings her notes back. I have to get it from somebody because I can't even read her notes. They are terrible. Because remember, I spoke about even sometimes when you write on the board, they can't write correctly. So I ask her to bring the teacher's notes or a friend's notes. And then I record it for her while we're learning how to read. So I think that method can also work for someone who's already in special institution, okay? While you're recording your notes, you're making sure you're finding accommodations for yourself, because I know the school won't help you. We have phones, now you can record your lecture, okay? You can record your lecture. You can talk to your teachers, lecturers, that's what they call them. If there are different ways, there's something called UDL, different ways you can give an answer to a question, all right? I mean, you, you, you also have to advocate for yourself. That's the truth. You need to let some teachers know, some lecturers know. Of course, it might not be easy because some might say you're just being lazy. But of course, you'll see, it's still possible for you to find people who have heard about dyslexia before that might embrace. It. And it's also, I mean, you can also tell us, hey, yeah, what are you can, can do an awareness in your school for lecturers to keep to know more out there, okay? They don't need to drop out of school. Just find a way to stop the program and then get moving for yourself as a school as well. I hope this helps.
Wow. Uh, thank you so much for that very valuable um, valuable insight for all of us with loved ones um, who are dyslexic um, and currently at technical level of education. Very valuable insight. Thank you. Um, and console as well. Um, there is another question by um, Apoyolua Adewale Fasoro. Fasoro. Um, is dyslexia hereditary? You already addressed it, but I'll let you address it. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, I address that it is hereditary. I mean, I was talking to someone with uh, dyslexia, and she was already telling me that, you know, I'm dyslexic, so I'm already planning to homeschool my kids. Why? Because I know there is a tendency for them to have dyslexia, and I'm not going to throw them into this system. Okay, I'm going to first of all lay a foundation at home because she understands that it is hereditary. So, yes, it is. For most, kids that I've worked with. I've seen, I mean, they're parents, for some parents that are vulnerable, they come out and they tell you that, wow, these things my child is struggling with, I also struggled with them. So I can really understand. I just didn't know that it was dyslexia. And now that I know, I'm happy my child doesn't have to go through all the things I went through. For instance, if you hear Lady Rosa's story, I mean, even all the dyslexia that I hear today, don't need story about suicide and all of that. These are all of, all of the things they have to go through, okay? And now they know better, yeah? They know better. They know what dyslexia is. They know it's hereditary. So if they have kids, most of them are already planning to be a kid. So <laughs> yes, it is hereditary. Thank you. Thank you. And then he, um, Ad oh, Ad 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 oh. can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, somebody else. Uh, yes. So the further question is at what age do the symptoms um, surface? Yeah. Okay, right from preschool, like I was saying, right from, I mentioned those signs. You know, I talk about early intervention. Early intervention is key right now in the world of special needs education. Okay, when you start early, neuroelasticity, you're able to rewire the brain, restrain the brain, because you know how our brain are, you're able to form it at that early age. So those signs I mentioned, I spoke about a child delayed speech, I spoke about unable to follow uh, a rhythm, I spoke about uh, mistaking directionalities left or right, all of those signs I mentioned, you can see those signs in preschool, in kindergarten, in when you see those signs, it is time to address it. It's time to take the child so that the child can get help. Now, I always say kids start learning how to read even before they start learning how to read. There is something called phonemic awareness. So, for instance, if I say e left tap, I'm going to have, ask the preschooler or a kindergarten, how many taps did you hear? E left tap. A child who is proud, who has red flags for dyslexia, might not understand that at all. I mean, I'm trying to break it down to you. She can't understand. I mean, so all of those signs, right from preschool, you can see those signs and the child can start getting help. The child might not be, because I know for different countries, we have different ages, where early intervention is key. The child might not be able to, to get an assessment at that age, depending on the country where the child is, but the child can start getting help. Meaning you can start teaching, paying more attention to the child, and using multi-sensory teaching methods, like I mentioned, to help the child, so that the child gets help. So, as young as preschoolers, I mean, if I see a preschooler here, I can tell you which one has uh, signals, you know, I'll call it red flag for dyslexia, and I'm going to get to work immediately. Like I always say, it is not a disadvantage. Let's just imagine it was just a red flag. But by the time I put all of my energy, all of my team resources into it. I mean, even if it wasn't dyslexia, there is no disadvantage to that. So, and like I always say, teaching children, the, the multisensory method should not just be a method for children with dyslexia. It's a method that benefits all children. And that's why teachers who know how to teach children with dyslexia are at advantage because there is no student, no child you cannot teach. And that skill in the 21st century is a skill that every teacher should have being able to teach children with diverse learning issues. Mm -hmm. Hope I answered that. 
Hmm. Indeed. Thank and my you. coach is here, Mr. Laneke. Please, you can drop answers too in the comment section. <laughs> so feel free, ma'am, drop your answers in the chat. But we also have people who are dyslexic here. You can drop your experiences, you know, feel free, okay? Engage, drop them down there. Thank you. Thank you so much. What do you think about this? Uh, just personally, you know, me to you. <laughs> what do you think about um <laughs> what? What do you think about incorporating um dyslexia training in um teachers training across Nigeria with, um considering the fact that uh, I mean, a teacher that knows how to teach a dyslexic student, like you said, in, um, in the teaching, um, in teaching. In teaching. Yeah, we should. Okay, I want to be sure I got your, your, your voice is breaking. Uh oh. Do you want me to come again with my question? Your voice is breaking, but I know you're talking about, yes, please come again with your question. I know I heard the first part about incorporating. Yes. Here, right? Yes. So um, you said, which indeed it is very true that a, a teacher who knows how to, um, who is adept at teaching a dyslex a student that is dyslexic is a very valuable tool currently in um, in in, edu in education currently. Well, how, um, what do you think about incorporating um, and how do you think um, incorporating dyslexia training into um, teacher training in Nigeria, you know, would would work? Okay. Uh, most schools have started, it's just that it is not effective. I think that's just the problem we're having in my beautiful country. Like, I, I went to the University of Jos, I graduated from the University of Jos, and what's the special education? The uh, special education was a core course. Is it for the core? Yes, you're 100, uh, and you have to do special education in the faculty of education. Okay, you have to do special education. You know, it was just for, okay, let's just do it. I think that's the problem we have. Let's just, let's, we just do it for doing sake. Let's just have special education. Let's just have you do special education. But these things are not taught in depth. Like I always say, yes, yeah, study special education is cool. But where I study special education the most is at the academy. academy can step out. You get your university. That was my university. And all the case that we found academy, she's right there. You can send her a message as well. That's where I get my my, got my training from. I'm in school, it's like they were just giving us tests. I have to explain it. It wasn't practical. It was something to really rate with. But working and learning and getting at the academy, it was a whole new level. So I think all of these things are in place. We just need to make them very effective. I mean, the University of just offers special education four years, you know. So you come out of that, I mean, with everything happening, maybe five years, you come out five years, and I mean, sometimes you're wondering, you're wondering what you actually got from there. So we just need to work one on the curriculum, and we just need to, to just expect all of this. Like I said, people who study. Uh, people who are in the faculty of education who, who are studying education actually run uh, a one semester or one year course in special education, but it is not effective. So we just need to make all of these things effective. So incorporating it is not even the question. It's something that must. Something that is a must. Mm. I think doing it draws something there about the question of education. We see that's the start of us and we're spreading, spreading. So we need everybody, and that is what this no dyslexia is all about okay we need your support we need you to hashtag no dyslexia we need people to ask questions and know about this and so that people are the top leaders we need because we can't sit down here alone and do this i can't go to university of Benin and start saying okay effect this change no we have to go through the leadership of that state down to the bc and all of that so we need to make this awareness go go forth. So after here, make sure you make a post, hashtag no dyslexia, and make sure you tag one word Africa. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have two more questions um, on the meeting chat. One from Ayo Deji. Um, do we have any good testing or assessment center in Nigeria for people with dyslexia? Yes. Yes, we do. At least I know for Abuja. 
Cadet Academy, that's Dewdrops Community Center for Special Needs, Net Special Needs offers for all the special needs you can think of, 13 disabilities. So that's the one good place to go for all. I, on the other hand, Dyslexia Health Africa, I offer assessments for just for children with dyslexia, with learning issues. So you have Dyslexia Health Africa, you have Cadet Academy, I can vouch for those two. Thank you so much. Um, and the last question, I believe, um, from Garuba Peace to J. Okay. Um, what is the solution to a child with delay in comprehending and answering questions? Okay, the solution. Now, there is no one solution, like I always love to say. And then you need to find out what is causing the problem. You said, brain and what? And answering questions. Comprehension and? Answering of questions. Okay, comprehension and answering question okay so first let's talk about comprehension remember i spoke about a child's inability to comprehend because they are spending so much time trying to decode yeah so you want to look at that too you want to figure out okay now don't read the question or whatever passage you want them to read. let me read it out for you and then check the child's comprehension too how is the child able to answer that question okay and then there are also um, different strategies you can use. We have graphic, um, we have graphic organizers that you can use in helping them to understand the comprehension. So you need to find ways to make them understand that thing. So don't just tell the child just read, okay? Especially if you have issues um, with learning. First, make sure you try other methods like reading it out for them. Two. You can have graphic organizers that break each paragraph. So they read a paragraph. Don't wait for them to read everything. I read a paragraph now. Okay, so what is this paragraph saying? Okay, write it here. Now you're teaching them that skill that they're going to use even when you're not around. So that for each time they're reading a comprehension, either an exam or wherever they are, have a paper, have a pen, create a graphic organizer. Okay, this is what the first paragraph is saying. I write it down. This is what the second paragraph is saying. I write it down. This is what the third paragraph is saying. I write it down. When I'm done, I see everything. And then I'm able to tell you what that comprehension was, it was all about. So there are other different strategies you can use. And then the second one the person spoke about was, uh, was it processing or remembering? Is it comprehending and answering questions? And then for answering questions, of course, they need to understand before they can answer the questions. If they're not answering your questions, it's because they don't understand. So if that issue of understanding the comprehension is sorted out, they'll be able to answer. Mm -hmm. And then while they're answering your question, remember, okay, retelling, rephrasing, summarization, perfect. That's also other methods to use, retelling, rephrasing, and move on to comprehension. So the processing speed. Now that's another thing you need to look out for too. Some kids need time to process some information. Okay, what did you just tell me? Get an answer, then give it back to you. Okay, so you need to know your child's processing speed. You need to find your child's processing speed. Now, so I mentioned some methods there that you could also use. Aside from the graphic organizer, there's something called retelling. Like I was in a three letter story with my student, the past time, and I was asking her, What is this story all about? You know, retell the story to me. Um, I mean, that's, that's another way of getting to teach them how to comprehend. She wasn't able to retell everything. So I now started from the beginning. I was like, okay, let's mention the characters in this story. What are the characters here? So she mentioned the cat, and then she mentioned the dog, and then she mentioned the map. So you can see there's a problem there already. So I'm like, no, the map is not a character. So I have to explain who a character is. The map is an object in the... In the story, it is not a character. So your major characters there are the cat and the dog. So you can see the dog. So you see, I'm breaking it down and I'm helping the child to understand more. So this takes time. But if you're able to learn all of these strategies and teach your students, they do amazingly, amazingly well. Making inference, predicting, I love predicting. So I, I'm sure you're seeing all of those things in the comment section as well, in the chat. So make sure you Google them out and always look for research based sites, please. Okay, not just anything on the internet. So I hope this helps. Thank you so much. Um, You're welcome. Lola Aniki also.
for your um for your valuable contribution as well. One more question from Dayo Fagbinru. Um, I understand this is more of a public policy question, but um, your contribution be, is valuable as well. Learning for dyslexic will be best addressed with specialist schools and supported with some and supported with some support in the mainstream schools. Indeed, is there any plan to advocate for the establishment of a specialist school, at least one in each state? Um, I'm aware that there are private schools, but we need more. That's the question. Did you get the question, please? Okay, yes, yes, I got I got the question. Okay. Uh so I would like to say now when you're talking about special needs in general, there is something called least restrictive environment. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that every child who has special needs has to be kept in one place, needs to have uh, a special center where they are kept. Now, when a child has a learning need, it could be mouth. It could be severe, it could be moderate, right? So you need to know for kids who have mild issues, these are kids who should be accommodated in the classroom. So it means that in every school, either private or public schools, we need people who can accommodate these kids. And like I keep saying, knowing how to teach diverse learners is, is no longer a skill just for special needs. I mean, you have kids with dyslexia in your class, so as a teacher, it has become something you must know. It is a first skill that you must know. And then we have kids who are on the movement, where you can have a special they come in and help, what we call classroom support. Maybe the work is just too much for the teacher, and sometimes you just need to pull out that child out and focus on his time and lay aside other subjects that are not important, maybe like French. Because I'm not even done learning how to, to read in English. So, what's it with French? So, you can lay aside French for a while, lay aside other subjects for a while, and focus more on reading and push all of those hours into reading. And then you have kids who are severe, where they have to be taken to special centers. And even in those special centers, it is not for them to be there forever. Okay? It is for them to be worked on, in quotes, and then they are pushed back into the school system. Right? So, um, yes, the private bodies are doing their best. I'm here. One Word Africa is here. Cadet Academy is here. Dyslexia Nigeria is here. The one that we need now is uh, people in the classroom who can help. Because I tell you, these kids with learning skills, they are taught the right way. You know, if, if you don't have to come this far. Most kids who have severe dyslexia right now, are because this issue is handled very young, therefore it compiles and everything just moves up and up and up in. So when we start eventually how pulling all things that have been mumbled up. But we have teachers who understand this from preschool. I'm telling you, kids will just need kids who ought either be on the mouth level or moderate level and can even get help in the classroom or when someone else comes in to support. So, yes, there are two things we're fighting for. That teachers understand what this is i can i can render help and also more people get qualified in teaching kids with this issue now i know it is expensive <laughs> it is so it has to be a lot of sacrifice we need more people here with people who are willing to train and give this training better course sometimes teachers complain about how expensive it is but i tell you getting um certified Certified not difficult. Cadet Academy offers an international certification. So you can instead of waiting for the government, you can on your own put up, put up money together and get help. Like for me, when I started offering help, I started with my state. Okay, I started help, I started giving help in my state because I realized that there was nothing there. And interestingly, one of um, the people, one of the schools that I couldn't work as anyway, she has also been with the Cadet Academy. While I moved to Abuja, she started something there. So she's now there as a boy, helping people with special needs in Fenway State, you know. So why wait for the government? How you can start to, how about you? Where are you located now? Are you in Abuja? Are you in Pakot? Are you in uh, Ogun State? You can ask someone in Ogun right now who is getting trained. So by the time he gets trained, he stands as a boy now in Ogun State. And I can refer schools to people there. You don't have to go in Lagos, you can refer to. 
So we need, first of all, individuals to rise up aside the government, get help, and then we're able to refer people that we have someone certified in this particular school to go there and we can get help. I hope I was able to do justice to that. And I know a lot is happening in the comment, in the chat uh, area, so please read them. Thank, thank you. you so much. Um, thank you. Um, this has been a very, very, a very um, highly informative session on understanding dyslexia. It is indeed a learning difference, um, not a learning difficulty as well. The dyslexics have just as much um, the same IQ um, intelligence as you know as uh, the as the average students um, does as well. And it's better for early intervention. It's extremely helpful. And, you know, to to the student, to the to the dyslexic um, child or individual as well, and um, it is deaf. It is hereditary. Mm -hmm. it, it is. It can be acquired. Mm -hmm. as well. And as already said, early intervention is extremely helpful as well. And it's it's management strategies. You know, it works because no two dyslexics are the same. So it works. Um, exactly. Our, as you mentioned, are very helpful and structured literacy intervention as well as you as you also and thoughts today through multi-sensory approach are also very, very um, useful as well. So um, with that, um, you've, we've quite gone above the um, required time as well. Um, doing Ido, Ola doing Indo um, has a message yeah. for everyone. Time flies when you're having fun talking about dyslexia. Okay. Third for that. Yeah, so um, I would play a voice note from um, Ola Doi Indo, founder of One Word Africa. Um, she has a voice note for everybody. As she has a poor network, so she sent in a um, voice note for everybody. I'll try to play it. Everybody, thank you. Oh, Please let me know if it is loud. Yeah, I can hear. I was hearing something. Hello, okay. everybody. Thank you so much for joining in. We appreciate you for being a part of our first live session. We apologize for all the technical difficulties faced. For future purposes, we would be pre-recording each session so that we wouldn't face difficulties like this. Um, Either way, this is the first of many sessions to come because the No Dyslexia Project is an integrative project to provide resource for anything dyslexia that you would need online. All you need to do is pick your phone, go to any of our platforms, and you'll find whatever resource you need, either it's to help your child, or to help your family, or to help a colleague at work, whatever level of dyslexia, whatever form of dyslexia, dyslexia, dyscalculia, dyspraxia, whatever the case may be, we are working tirelessly to provide an online resource. This is, and we're starting with this webinar, which you were a part of, and there'll be more webinars to come. <laughs> We'll be we will be we will be responding with more webinars to come. There are so many other um, um, speakers about. Um, but to cut the long story short, the my dyslexia story is very similar to most cases, and I used to think that my situation was worse, but I've had worse stories. And um, simply, simply put, I grew up in I grew up in a family that was, you know, comfortable. Oh, I'm, I'm I grew up I'm growing up still growing in a family that is comfortable. My parents provided me with all the resources that I, I need. Um, they got me the best of education. They provided me with the lessons, which has, you know, whatever the case may be, they provided. It, I, I got more lessons to child than any, any child could ever imagine. I was taking lessons in every, every, every course because they were concerned. And they saw the fact that they were in education, they were, you know, in top levels of government. They also didn't know how to help me, which was which which was something to also consider. That if people that are supposed to be there to implement this change do not even know about this thing, what are the fate of those the people that have been affected? So um they were disappointed, of course. I was disappointed as well. I didn't know why I, I couldn't learn the way 
you know, my colleagues were learning. And despite the fact that I was doing lesson teachers and all the money they spent, I, I had lesson teachers and all the money they spent on me. I had no idea what was going on and it was frustrating for me. But they didn't, it didn't feel like that to them. They felt that I just was taking everything for granted. It eventually, it led to me having to treat um, depression, having to see a psychologist for depression because I was, I was, I was suicidal. I was frustrated, and I had all the aspirations I had in life. Where I was started from wanting to be a an aviation medical doctor, and it just it just left everything was everything was evaporated from the frustration of not passing my exams. And my parents also didn't know how to help me. They, they providing me with more lesson teachers, nothing was changing and it was really a frustrating experience for me. Um, eventually I decided to stop and not go back to school anymore. So I came home one day for Christmas, I refused to go back in January once when school resumed. My parents were frustrated, they weren't really having it. They threatened Elle and I water, but you know, I was depressed, I was tired, I was done. I'm like, no, I would rather just stay up there if that if that was what it had to come and stuff like that. Prior to that too, I had cases of teachers who, male teachers who preyed on my vulnerability and would offer, um, offer to, you know, give me good scores if I do silly things. But thankfully for how I was, it never led to that. I, I just was done. I wasn't even interested in whether to appease a lecturer or to whatever the case may be. I wasn't interested. But um, eventually I discovered that it was dyslexia. And immediately I found out it was dyslexia. It was easier to know the kind of help that I needed from getting the help that I needed, from knowing exactly what the problem was. I needed the right kind of help to look for. And I've been, I'm back, I'm back in school. I'm running off my, my degree in psychology. Um, I'm an aspiring aviation psychologist already in the association of American aviation psychologists. That's not related yet. I've, I've had amazing internships with Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, amongst other things. Um, my, my dyslexia gift is also tied in the lines of design. Um, things. So I'm a production designer. I have certification in interior wow. and event decoration. Whatever certification you can think of, my father has had to pay for one training or the other, and I've excelled in them. So now I... I have my professional career in aviation psychology coming up, and um, I have the One World Africa Foundation going for me, as well as my design and craft business, which is involved in designing of spaces, whatever space you want to design, whether it's your interior of your house, your event, whatever the case may be. I have such great gift of design, and um, my dyslexia also helps me to to you know think in pictures so it makes me a, an amazing um, project developer it makes me there's so many things that i can do because of how i think and before when i used to think it was a dysfunction now it, it was it was hard to you know figure out how to unnest those potentials but now that i understand what it is i know how best to unnest my potentials and i'm using all the skills well for myself so i would just like to encourage everybody that you know even if you're dyslexia it's not it's not a life sentence when you understand dyslexia more you would understand that it is a gift to have thank you all are doing you do um so thank you um all are doing, you do. amazing oh i'm founder of one with africa foundation um and that is a message to us today. Thank you once again. Um, please kindly submit your or send in your um, email address on the meeting chat. Um, the, today's lesson would be sent to, um, summary of today's lesson would be sent into um, every provided email address addresses in the meeting chat as well. Um, so one final request before we end today's session. If, would, if everybody All right, thank you so much. Thank you. I'd like to, okay, you were saying something, but I'm blessing. No, no, I'll just say my bye-byes. <laughs>
Awesome. Okay. Um, what is about? Uh, I'd like to take no, it no. everybody to get just on your video. If you don't mind. We have two pages. Okay, so not so many. Page one, three, two, one, done. And um, okay, it's three, two, one. Thank you so much again for today. Um, thank you for your time and thank you for um, for your patience as well through through the um, today's lesson. Could you please share the instruction for One Africa knowledge today? Okay, awesome. So. The No Dyslexia project, just to recap, is aimed at taking dyslexia awareness and um, teacher training workshops to every corner that needs to resource. And um, it is prompted by the growing request of people from different parts of the world to on, um, on dyslexia awareness as well as the needed training that it involves as well. So the No Dyslexia um, campaign and awareness to instructions uh, that you make a post of your, of preferably a picture of yourself. You tell us what dyslexia means to you. Um, you don't need to open a dictionary to do that. Just, um, just ex expressive first thing that comes to your mind um, when you think of dyslexia or when the thought of dyslexia uh, or the knowledge of dyslexia comes to you as well. And um, use the hashtag no dyslexia so we can easily find the post and tag us on all our social media um, platforms if you can. Um, that has been provided earlier on. I would copy and paste it again down below. And after that, you um, challenge five friends to do the same thing. Thank you so much again. Um, we have come to the end of today's meeting. Again, thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much for your time and for your attendance. Um, we really appreciate this. Thank you so much when I'm blessing um, Nyapu once again. I mean, you provided so very helpful, so um, very helpful insights and information on today's session. And God bless, and I wish you all a very wonderful evening. Bye-bye.